Let's face it, 2020 kind of sucked as a year, so you'd be forgiven for wanting to run off and live the next year in a virtual world, but with so many games to choose from, which ones are worth your time and which are dying lifeless husks? Let's find out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, I'm Josh Drive Hayes, and today I'll be answering the question, should you play Guild Wars 2 in 2021? We'll be looking at several aspects of the game and then deciding if it's worth playing. Before we begin, remember to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the little bell icon so you get all the future videos. And as usual, a massive thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who make all my content possible. Right, let's go. Platforms. Guild Wars 2 is only available on Windows and Mac. While a Steam launch has been announced, it's not out yet, so you'll have to play it through the game's official launcher. So sorry console users, you're gonna have to skip this one. Cost and pricing. As for cost, you can play the entire core version of the game entirely for free. This means you're getting a lot of content to try before you buy. Free accounts can experience the majority of the game, but there are some limitations. You'll be limited to only two character slots, and each character can only carry three in-game bags, which does mean you'll be playing with a slightly reduced inventory. Free accounts are also slightly limited on where they can travel to in the early game, being restricted to the starting maps until level 10 and unlocking the main city of Lion's Arch at level 35. This is mainly to stop gold selling sites, creating a load of level 1 free accounts and flooding the main city. You also can't access guild banks or join raids, that's the end game combat content. Despite these limitations sounding harsh, the free trial still includes a vast amount of stuff to do. You'll be able to play almost any class and experience the early game story train your crafting skills and explore the lower level dungeons. Once you do decide to buy the game and upgrade to a core Guild Wars 2 account, you'll also receive the expansion packs Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire, and instead of being a monthly sub, it's a one-time lifetime payment. These packs often go on sale, so you can often pick up the full game and both expansions for around £15, which for a lifetime game is an incredibly good deal. There is an in-game cash shop known as the Gem Store, but they've been very strict at keeping it mostly cosmetic only. There's a huge variety of skins and overrides for everything from weapons to armor to the gliders you can fly around on. And while you can find profession boosters or experience increases, the cash shop isn't broken. You can easily level all the way through the game without ever touching it. Theme and the world. Guild Wars 2 is set in the fantastical and magical land of Tyria, which covers all landscapes from lush dense forests to futuristic sci-fi labs, lava-filled volcanoes, or murky marshes. The map is expansive and the land's extremely interesting. Part of the gameplay actually involves discovering the hidden vistas and vantage points on each map, meaning if you're a player who values the journey and discovery more than the combat and killing, Guild Wars 2 could suit you very well. You even gain experience for discovering new areas and completing hidden jumping puzzles, so it's totally possible to advance a character by just adventuring around. Guild Wars 2 was built around the idea of a living story, smaller but more frequent quest and story updates to keep players engaged, so while it may only have two major expansions, it has many, many smaller expansions counted as part of the core game. The world of Tyria has changed greatly over the years and you'll be able to go back and replay these stories and read about events of the past. The lore is extremely detailed, and if you want a good continued adventure outside of the game, you've actually got several actual novels that are pretty damn good. Races. Character creation gives you access to five distinct races. Each are immensely visually different and have super intricate backstories and histories. They also all start in different zones in the game, and as you level up and explore, you'll be able to visit each of the other four zones, bringing with it the striking architecture of this particular race. The Asura are physically short, but incredibly intelligent, focusing on magic and drawing from a long history of scholars and inventors. The Silvari are closer to traditional elves. They have an intense connection with nature and are all connected through a psychological plane called the Dream. Humans do exist in the world, but aren't as dominant as they once were. They are able to interact and work with all the other races. Human cities range from crumbled down ruins to mighty monuments to the unstoppable spirit of humanity. Norns are mighty shape-shifting barbarians from the frozen wastes of the north. They're built like humans, but with much stronger and far more brutal bodies. The Norns are based off the old Norse legends and come with all the courage and battle prowess you'd expect. And finally, the Char, a muscle-bound race of cat-like warriors. Char society has been focused exclusively on warfare for as long as anyone can remember, and so they are second to none when it comes to making stuff dead. Professions. Once you've got a race, choose a class, or as Guild Wars 2 calls them, professions. There are eight professions available to free players. The magic-casting Mesmer, who fight using illusions of themselves and can conjure teleport portals for other players. The solid and stoic Guardians, who value defense and can take a large amount of damage before dying. The Necromancers, specialize in 
and draining the enemy of life and using that to refill their own. Rangers are masters of the bow and firearms and command a variety of animals to fight alongside them. Elementalists are complex wizards who can switch between elements in combat to weave some complex attack patterns. Warriors are your standard here's a big sword go and smack stuff with it class. Thieves focus on stealth and tactics to outwit an opponent. They are super agile and can use multiple daggers or pistols in any combination together. And the engineer can build mobile weapons turrets to shoot their enemies while throwing grenades around. And when you do pick up the expansion packs, you'll also be able to access the Revenant, an odd class that channels the memories of the greatest heroes of history and mimics their fighting style for a short time. Whatever profession you choose, you'll be able to solo your way through most of the game and still be a useful member of a party. Your skill with a class matters much more than the class itself. Combat system. As for combat, while Guild Wars 2 started as a classic tab target lock on system, it's actually had the incredibly fun action camera mode added. Normally, you'd press tab to target an enemy and then cycle through your attacks. It's a tried and tested MMO formula, but switching to action combat in the menu changes this up. Now your camera is locked to your mouse and all your attacks go wherever you aim them. This is brilliant if you're after a more active and engaging combat experience. The absolute best part about this combat, however, is how it's managed to combine these systems so smoothly and allow players using both to fight alongside each other. One common criticism, and one I personally hold, is the combat can sometimes feel floaty and hits or impacts against enemies feel weightless, but if you can look beyond the lack of immediate feedback, it's still one of the better combat experiences out there. Guild Wars 2 has focused on a horizontal progression system, meaning items in new expansions don't necessarily get much more powerful than what you've already got, they're just different. If you have the best weapons and armor from one set, a new expansion releasing isn't going to make you useless. You'll likely still be at or near the top, but now you have some new looking armor to go and find. This system does mean if you're after a game that has you constantly chasing the next better item, you may reach top and then burn out quickly, but if you're after a game where your effort and time taken to reach the top is then respected and your position most secure, it will be perfect. Guild Wars 2 is also one of the few MMOs to do underwater combat really well, letting you equip specific underwater weapons, either tridents for close-up stabbing or harpoon guns for long-range stabbing. Solo play and the personal story. If you prefer to play alone, then don't worry. Guild Wars 2 is set up to allow a solo player to journey all the way from start to finish without needing too much interaction. You can play at your own pace, explore, fight, discover, and level up constantly and consistently. If you are a solo player, you'll also enjoy the fantastic main storyline where you take center stage in an empire-wide adventure. You'll be meeting queens, princes, warlords, and traveling all around the map. When you do need to team up with players, the system in the game makes it rather quick. There's teleports known as waypoints around the map, linking you to where you need to go, and all all major dungeons have a waypoint by their entrance. But beyond this, you can choose to never touch a dungeon and focus on the deep and complex crafting system. Guild Wars 2 features some of the only legendary items I would say truly deserve the description legendary for the amount of time, reagents, and high skill levels required to make them. It's entirely possible to play for weeks and never even see some of the rarer weapons. Player base. No one wants to play a dead game, so how does Guild Wars 2 look as far as the player base goes? Well, MMO population puts Guild Wars 2 as the 8th most played MMO with just over half a million daily active players. That is plenty to make sure you will never ever be alone. Guild Wars 2 is considered one of the big five, and so has established itself as a major player within the MMO industry and should be around for many years to come. It is getting on in years by now, but its next expansion, End of Dragons, is set for release sometime in 2021. Amount of content. So how much content are you going to get? Well, as a free player, enough to let you make an informed choice about whether a single one-time payment of just under 20 quid is going to be worth it, and as a core player with the expansions, a solid few thousand hours. Guild Wars 2 is big, there's no denying that, and with so much non-combat stuff to do, completing the exploration of a map, crafting weapons, finishing jumping puzzles, you'll likely find a hell of a lot to keep you occupied when you are not running dungeons. So should you play it? Guild Wars 2 had an acceptable launch and has done very well. The core game may seem slow paced and dull to some, but the expansions and expansion content really picked that up and definitely are worth playing through. It's not going away anytime soon and has an extensive wiki, skilled YouTube content creators and enough clout in the industry to remain relevant. It does seem to favour the more casual style of play, so if you're after an MMO that you can jump into and out of and never feel like you're falling behind on, it's absolutely a good choice. It has also got content for the super hardcore players out there, but understand, you will be putting months of your life into crafting those legendary weapons. Cheers for watching. Let me know in the comments if you decide to play Guild Wars 2 and drop a like on the vid, sub to the channel and ring the bell for more MMO content. A huge thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who make all my content possible. You can support the Patreon from only £1 a month or join the Discord, links are all below. Thank you for your time and, as always, have a great day.